Hello, nerds, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon right here on Mistledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Legend of Dragoon video. We are nearing the end. The end of disc three, my friends, which is crazy. I feel like I feel like this journey has been so long. A uh, huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys, and I love hanging out with you, so thank you. Uh, in the last episode, we did literally nothing uh, important whatsoever, and uh, uh, thank you to those who ended up watching it. Anyways, uh, all we really did is do some backtracking and see some little dialogue. Nothing super important in this episode, though. In this episode, we could potentially finish this three. So let's get started and head into this area right here, the snow field. And of course, Gloriano, the place that we ended uh, the last episode. Gloriano being the place, the old continent, the place where the 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 humans and winglies begun their liberation or the humans begun their li you know what i mean anyways we can grab a chest right over here i knew it but that's okay because here in the snow fields we can talk about some of the enemies that we will find which there are a bunch of oh okay cool all right so i don't listen listen okay i just want to talk about this real quick i don't care what you tell me all right i i don't it doesn't matter this is not a weasel. This is an ice shark. I, I, it doesn't matter. It's an ice shark. Look at it. It's got like a fin and everything. Look at that thing. Anyways, that is a windy weasel wind element. 320 health. Uh, it has an 8% chance of dropping the magic item rave twister. The enemy next to it is the bowler. Bowling. Has no element whatsoever. 400 health and has an 8% chance of dropping, well, an attack ball. <laughs> Which we don't really need. And of course, with Kongle, we're just wiping him out. No problemo. Of course, I do need to heal up Dart because he did get some poison status. Uh, on our way to the actual snowfields. Oh, look at that big old moon strike out of Dart. Guys, I'm the best. So anyways, these enemies, you will be encountering a lot of them. But that's okay. Hopefully, by the time we're done with the the uh, snow field, you'll actually be able to see every encounter, one of which uh, does drop a 2% chance at getting something called the Gigantos Ring, which isn't a huge deal because we can actually buy one uh, very, very soon. So I'm not super worried about something like that. Dart should probably heal up at some point. Look at Oh! God, I'm nailing these moon strikes. I'm the best. I'm the best around. But anyways, we can grab this chest here, which contains a burnout. Obviously, being in a snow field, you would think it would be more useful. That was weird. I have something to tell you before we go to Velweb. It's about Diaz. I see. With this blizzard, it's not a bad time to take a break. What is all of this around us? The landscape. It almost looks like a carcass of some kind. Make the world regenerate. Regeneration of the world. Ruin of Cadessa three years ago. Hey, we've been there. The world now is rotten like a fallen fruit. It has the same smell as the world ruled by Melbu Frama, the wingly dictator. The worlds where inertia is considered to be peace and the easy path leads to devolution. The overture to the destruction has already begun. Devolution? You're saying that is the reason why our magic power is deteriorating. It is not only for you, Winglies. It is the danger all species are facing. Now, how can we regenerate the world? You, Winglies, are merely the 107th species. The great will of the creator Soa prepared the last, the 108th species. The last species is the last god, which will regenerate the world and lead us to Utopia.
count a hundred and eight years. And when the moon that never sets glares red, the moon child descends to the earth and shall give a holy blessing to the world. The moon child of this legend is the last species. It is the god that gives holy bliss to the world. That's not true. It is the truth. Then why does the black monster continue to kill the moon child? Hmm. That devil wants to stop the evolution after imagining himself scorched to death by the blessed light brought by the last species. Lloyd, what is the relationship between the moon divine moon objects you have been pursuing and the birth of the moon child? The ancient winglies feared their status as the supreme species would end and sealed up the 108th species. The keys to dissolving the signet are the gem, dagger, and mirror named after the moon. You were going to release the moon child, in other words, the god, using the divine moon objects. If I don't do it, somebody else will. Even the last god cannot escape from the fate determined by Soa. That's all that I wanted to tell you. The rest will be told by Diaz. If you desire a utopia, why did you take Shauna away? What is Shauna to you? Hmm. All the truth will be told in Velweb. Hmm. But what does it mean? Hey, Miru! Dart, the blizzard's over! <laughs> She's a good one to tell, right? Because, you know, if it wasn't, she would have some problemos, right? Anyways, uh, you can come back into this room that we stayed in, and you'll actually see that Dart is now full health, but he does, of course, have uh, poison status still, so we'll, we'll have to use something to get rid of that. You can also come over here, and you can, you can actually rest. Uh, so... I just wanted to point that out. It's a free rest. It takes a little bit longer, and there is a better place coming up where we can do some leveling. Uh, but I thought that I would just point it out. This isn't a horrible place to level. Really. Truly. It's not. All right. So, right here is actually a very weird-looking map. So, you can see up if we were to continue north here. That would actually lead us out of the snowfields. You'll also see something a little bit to our... Uh, a little bit th 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 this way above right where Dart is. Uh, don't worry about that just yet. Hopefully, we get into a random encounter against something we haven't seen before. Uh, sort of. We still got a bowling, but we also have this big troll fella here, the Wild Man, which is, of course, a thunder-based elemental enemy uh, with 720 health and also has a chance, a 2% chance of dropping a Gigantos ring. I'm going to go ahead and actually transform Dart into a Dragoon just so he loses the poison status. Wild Man casted a spell. This is going to do so much damage to Kongol. I... Never mind. <laughs> I'm a liar. Anyways, we have a little bit of a mini game here. You'll actually see this sign. And if you try to read it, it says danger ahead snow slides. So let's go ahead. Oh no, we fell. All right. So we need to actually use. All right. One. Let that one go. Three, four. And we'll actually land right at this chest. But you have to do it in that specific order to be able to get this chest. There's also a chest right next to us. But we can't do that unless we run all the way up and come back down, which of course we'll be doing. But I wanted to grab this, this item first, which is the magic shield. It's a reusable item. That uh, a repeat item doesn't go away. You can use it as many times as you want. It actually nullifies magic attacks for three turns on that target. So it's actually very, very useful. I thought I would just point that out. So we end up getting the magic shields. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have to go all the way up to get the chest that we can see sitting right there. But when you slide down here, get ready to press X again to make Dart land on his feet. Hey! It's your fault, Dart. You slipped and we all ended up in here. Oh! These are the ancient characters of the Winglies. Let me read it. Winglies. Ouch. Moss. Mm, oops. It's too hard to read. 
Uh, can you do better than that? There are some human characters, too. Gigantos, too. Uh, I was bad at classics. <laughs> can you read some of them, Rose? The cursed land where the decline of the Winglies began. Nobody is allowed to touch the door. The Judge Nomos of the Court of Zinabatos. Uh, Zinabatos? It was one of the most prosperous cities of the ancient Winglies. It's over there? No. If my memory is correct, over there should be Fort Magrad. But Velweb is up there. Let's go back quickly. Okay. <laughs> oh, as if I would. All right. The cursed land where the decline of the Winglies began. Nobody is allowed to touch the door. Judge Nomos of the Court of Zinabatos. Huh. We, of course, are not going back. We are going, my friend, to the optional area, Fort Magrad. There is no reason to come here. Uh, outside of, well, you'll see, my friends. Um, I highly recommend coming here. Look at me, Rue. She's just the best. Oh, she fell. <laughs> Dart! I thought we have no business in here. But look at me, Rue. Let's give her a little break. What is she doing? She just like squatted for a second and... Oh! Ow! <laughs> Next time, put a rock in it. You said it is Fort McGrath? Is this one of the Wingley's ruins too? No. It belonged to humans. What? It was the land where Diaz declared war against the Winglies, with tens of thousands of soldiers and seven dragoons. I heard about it. Whoa. So this was the beginning place where Diaz and humans actually like started their, their liberation campaign? Start, let's keep going. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, let's keep going. So Fort McGrath is kind of part of, it's kind of part of the snowfields, and it's an entirely optional area. It also, speaking of random encounters, it has the same enemies that you can encounter in the snowfields here in Fort McGrath as well. So it really is, it's called Fort McGrath, but it really is part of the snowfield. And obviously you can see that the, the place where you actually fight kind of changes a little bit, but there is an optional boss here, a very important optional boss, and we're going to tackle it now. And moving on, we can grab a chest right here. This place is actually loaded with items, so keep that in mind. That is a magic item, the Midnight Terror. We can go ahead and use that later on. We don't really need it right now. And, oh, look at this. Rose. Dragoons are descending here in this place again. What we desire is freedom, or give us death. God bless Diaz! God bless Gloriano! I am to bring light to the human's future. I'm to pass judgment on the past of the Winglies. I am Diaz! God bless Diaz! God bless Gloriano! God bless Diaz! God bless Gloriano! God bless Diaz! God bless Gloriano! Rose? Is anything wrong? No. Nothing. Let's move on. We don't need to stay here any longer. Oh, but we do because there are items and a boss fight and a really high encounter rate in this area. And we get a stunning hammer, which remember, uh, it afflicts the stunned status affliction on your target. But hey, new encounter maybe? Uh, sort of, we, we, we sort of get a new enemy. This is Mr. Bones, who is a darkness type enemy. Uh, Mr. Bone here has 450 health and has a 2% chance of dropping a bastard sword because that's what we need at this point in the game. But again, experience is actually pretty good in this area. It's just, we will be going to another area that just has better encounters. 
All right, so we have another chest that we can open here as well as the save point. Now, I'm not actually going to save. If you continue forward, you will get into a boss fight, and a lot of people consider this to be a very difficult boss fight. But as per use, I'm going to switch Miranda in here. Uh, I did actually off screen. Um, I, I went and I did this fight without recording just to see how it would go. And I had Congo Amoeba in my party and it was actually very easy. Um, so I'm not too concerned about it, to be totally honest with you. Uh, one of the big things, though, is the way that this fight goes. We actually want to make sure that uh, probably whoever is going to be your highest damage dealer or whatever uh, is going to have a talisman equipped on them. And there's a very, very important reason for this. So we'll go ahead and we'll equip her with uh, a talisman, which unfortunately does mean that she doesn't have the magic ring equipped, Miranda anyways. Uh, but that's okay. I'm also need to make sure that I think Dart still has a heat blade equipped to be totally honest with you. I think I forgot. He does because I stink at this game. All right. That's better now. All right. So we are going to proceed forward. And I highly, I actually do highly recommend using Miranda in this fight um, because well, you'll see in a second. But again, this is a purely optional boss fight. You do not have to do this to progress the story or anything like that, but there are some very good items that we can get. You'll see a chest right... Oh, I guess we can't get it. What? That's a cool-looking sword. Hmm. You. I heard you are going to have a wedding after this battle. There is no guarantee of coming back alive. Even if one of us dies, our bonds of affection are forever. Zeke, your eyes are already looking at our future. Then I will realize the future for you. They were going to get married? Sometimes... I don't know. I don't know if you're really the Rose I know. I am just me. Oh, what is this? Huh? A uh, floating sword! Because the dragoons made an appearance. It seems the souls of the soldiers who died in the dragon campaign have awakened. And here we go. The battle against the optional boss, the Polter Armor. Or should I say the Polter... The Polter Knight? The Polter... Listen, it's armor, helmet and a sword and also surprise i ended up throwing uh miru out of the party and instead i put rose in the party and the reason for that is because like i said in previous episodes i kind of want to make my party whoever the story kind of reflects right um it, or that boss fight reflects the story and, and who's involved in that and in this in this particular case i think that rose is a very very important part of this story of the polter armor because obviously like they're responding these soldiers that she fought for and 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 with right those guys uh are coming to life here by manifesting themselves as the polter armor so i think it's super cool to actually have her in the party of course we're going to use a power up and a speed up on miranda because miranda here is actually going to go ahead and transform into a dragoon because the polter armor my friends is a darkness based enemy every single part of him the helm has about 2400 health the armor has about 4000 health and the sword has about 3200 health here's the thing though potentially we might be able to destroy this in one white silver dragoon attack i'm not even joking so if we were to select you'd see that there's three different parts uh, it's also super important, like I said earlier, to put that talisman on Miranda because Miranda is hopefully going to be the one that actually is destroying the pieces. Whenever you destroy a piece of the Polter armor, whether it's the helm, the armor, the sword, the sword will inflict can't combat status. So you want to take out the sword first to reduce the amount of times that it does that. Although it doesn't really matter if you're always destroying a piece with whoever has a talisman equipped. Later on, there's actually a piece of equipment that we can get called Rose's Head Hairband that also prevents uh, instant death. So if you if you wanted to go into where we're about to head and grab that and then come back, you can. Uh, but I don't think we're really going to need that. This actually isn't that hard of a fight, especially when we were able to power up and speed up Miranda. Now we're going to use the dragon right away. But it is... Oh my god! It destroys! Oh, that was crazy. So much damage out of Miranda. 
like I said earlier, I did do this fight with Miru in Kongo, and it was very, very easy. So I thought that we would make it very easy this time as well. It looks like the helmet was destroyed in one hit. So the sword is going to go ahead and try to use this camp combat. But because we have Talisman on Miranda, she's going to be just fine, my friends. Look at this attack. Something else that I should talk about is the sword will also... Oh, it only does this, and it will melee attack somebody for not a lot of damage. The helm, though... Oh, and the sword got deleted in one attack. That's amazing! Oh, absolutely beautiful. The helm will actually... Uh, it, the only thing it does is it will block commands from happening. Like, it can block your attack command or your guard command or your item command on characters, right? Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Obviously, we don't have to deal with that. And the other thing that I should say about that is if it does block your attack, you can actually just... Well, you can you can simply just turn into a Dragoon and it will remove the block. Although it does tend to favor stopping you from turning into um, a... Uh, turning into a Dragoon. So that's one of the problems. The armor, though, the armor is the one that's going to be doing all the damage. It's going to use very very powerful magic attacks against you so keep that in mind miranda going three times in a row potentially finish it off in one turn that would be absolutely wild i don't think so though i don't think that's quite enough damage we're gonna go ahead and we're actually going to use i guess it doesn't really matter i could use the sun rhapsody on miranda and you know what i'm going to of course she's not going to use there's no reason for her to use the white silver dragon that would be way overkill so instead we'll use rose uh, to not do an addition at all. Something else that you could do to make this fight even easier, which is what I did with Kongo and Miru, is I used a speed down on the armor, since the armor is really the only thing that's going to be attacking and doing damage. Unless, of course, you know, it just straight up misses Miranda. So she could uh, use another white silver dragon to end the, end the fight real quick, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it go a little bit longer uh, and, and see what we can do here. Of course, the power-up. Oh, man. I thought she was about to do it. Of course, the power-up uh, has expired on Miranda, so she's going to be doing less damage. But I'd rather hopefully finish this off with a moon strike. No? Fine. All right, Miranda, finish this off. Of course, we could have used Star Children and probably called this. Or taken a little bit longer to finish this fight. And there you have it. The Polter armor is defeated. A very, very easy fight at this point in the game, especially if you take out the helm and you have the talisman equipped and all that jazz. In fact, we only get 6,000 experience from that, but we get two incredible items, the Soul Eater for Dart, which I'll get into in a little bit, and the Smoke Ball, which is a repeatable item that allows you to escape from any random encounter that you get into. It's a repeat item. Uh, it doesn't go away. You can use it forever. So I just thought I'd point that out. Yet another one. And uh, Hatchel looks like he leveled up in the background, and Miru also hit level 31. No one in our main party leveled up. I cannot complain that people bear grudges against me. Interesting. That's a weird thing to say. Anyways, uh, right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and switch my party. Again, I'm going to switch it back to... Let's do Kongol and Miru yet again, my friends. We're also going to go ahead and go into our equip stuff real quick. Uh, because I want to make sure... I think she's fine. Uh, we did just get that weapon for Dart here. This weapon is so, so good. Powerful. Look at how powerful that is, guys. Almost, what is that? Like a, almost 60, a 57. In, like that is an insanely powerful weapon, the Soul Eater. It's powerful, but HP decays every each and every turn. However, we can make that null and void by using the therapy ring. It'll actually take care of whatever uh, the, whatever the, um, the damage is done by the blade, the Soul Eater, Therapy Ring is going to take care of, which is obviously an incredibly powerful thing. Now, obviously, we do lose the speed from the Bandit's Ring for that, but I think it's okay, uh, especially because that means, you know, less additions from Dart, but more additions for everybody else. Right here, we can get the Armor of Yore, and right over here, we can get... Uh, I can't carry items, but what I can do is I can show you real quick 
uh, the armor of Yor, which we'll actually go ahead and equip on our dear friend Dart here. The armor of Yor is pretty neat in that it avoids poison, stun, and uh, uh, arm blocking. So yeah, you can you can just you can just put that on, and not only is it uh, well, it's it really doesn't help too much. It just gives you one increased defense and magic defense. But I mean, no status afflictions, right? No physical status afflictions, which is pretty nice. And we can grab this chest, which contains a panic bell, another item that it uses a status affliction or inflicts a status affliction. But that is all that you can do here in Fort McGrad. Yeah, just like that, guys. Just like that, we are done with this area, which is pretty wild. We can, of course, examine this statue. This worn statue seems to be of Emperor Diaz. His name is engraved in relief. Very cool. Of course, it looks very destroyed, but I just thought I would point that out. Uh, that you can examine that statue and see that little bit of dialogue there. But, my friends, that is all that we can do here in Fort McGrad. You can save if you want, but I don't think there's any real need. We'll be heading to the world map pretty soon. But, of course, there are more items that we can get here in the snowfields. But we'll just head up back here. It does have a very high encounter rate, by the way. Uh, the snowfield, uh, this whole area just has a very high encounter rate. So, don't be surprised if you get into more encounters than you really want to, obviously. And moving on, so many encounters. Already, just in that little spot, it went from blue to yellow. That's how fast the encounter rate is in this area. But like I said earlier, there are a ton more items that we can get here in the snowfield. So we have to head up this path here. Probably, yep, definitely, get into another random encounter. Don't worry, it's fine. And there we go. The last enemy that we can find in the snowfield area, the white ape, which has an 8% chance of dropping a uh, healing potion, has 500 health and is an earth-based elemental. But you know what? I have faith that we'll be able to take these guys out very quickly. Now, something else I'll say is that a lot of people, for whatever reason, seem to think that the soul crush or the, the soul eater uh, sword for dart and the therapy ring kind of breaks the game and breaks dart. And I really just... I kind of disagree with that unless you're unless you're relying on just an edition game uh I, I feel like there's just so many other things that are going to to quote unquote break the game for you you know what i mean anyways we can grab this chest here which contains a burning wave which is another magic attack item that we can use and oh geez louise personally i kind of feel like the soul eater just kind of brings dart in line with the rest of the party you know what i mean Right there, we get a gushing magma. Like, he's kind of been not bad, right? But not great for the majority of the game. And now, without that equipment set up, he's actually competent. Feels better. So, that is how you get up there. Is That's the only way to get from that trail to here. And now, what we want to do is that what side you fall of the sign is what chest you'll get. If you do the right, uh, the right, pressing the right button at the right time, right? So if we go down the the other side, the left-hand side from where Dart is, right? On the his left, uh, I guess to the right of the sign if you're looking at it. Um, if you go down that way, that's how we get the magic shield. So we'll jump down this side here and then we'll press the, when the icon appears, we'll do it on the second and fourth time. So that was one, two, three, and four. And that will lead us right to the last chest that we can get in the entire snow field, which contains a dancer's ring that we didn't need at all because I, I, we got three of them, remember, in a row. So just thought I'd point that out. And let's head all the way back up this ramp and out of the snow field. And now that we're back on top, we can head out this way. And that is it for the snow field. What is that? What is the snow field? Like, I'm so curious. Anyways, we're through it, which means we are back on the world map, back in Gloriano. And right before us stands the capital, Velweb. Why don't we go in, my friends? Look at this place, man. Here we are at the capital city, Velweb. The Seven Towers. Uh, is Diaz waiting for us somewhere in there? That is the Tower of the Seven Dragoons. The throne of the Holy Emperor is underneath there. We are standing at the legendary place where humans began their liberation. I wonder if it is an abominable place as well. You think too much. 
it's the same as Cadessa, isn't it? When you drag the pass around, you cannot walk anywhere. It is true, Miru. The forbidden land that was the royal capital of the Winglies. And this Velweb is a mere historic ruin. Yes. We can do nothing but settle for the present. Ya gosh darn tootin. But my friends, we are going to call it here. Right before we start the capital city of Velweb, because in the next episode, a lot is going to be revealed, and uh, I want to make sure that that gets all the focus that it can. Trust me, the next episode, the end of disc three, is going to be one hell. One hecka of a video, and you aren't going to want to miss it because they will be premiering. Uh, if you're watching this video when it comes out, it's premiering on Friday. Uh, if you're not, then it's in the playlist. It's the next, it's... It's just the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Dragoon. We did a lot. We were able to take down an optional boss and complete all of the snowfield and get 100% of the items and all that jazz. Thank you guys for watching. And remember to come to the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And also to never give up, never surrender, surrender to the English language.